Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back with quick hits. Uh, it's just early today. There's another one now. Uh, go check out the other show. It's on Canelo versus Bavol, the rematch. Please uh, check that out. Uh, but I want to get into uh, Dimitri Bavol. Um, Dimitri Bavol. I'm sorry. I don't want to get into Dimitri Bavol. I want to get into Demetrius Andres. I want to get into Demetrius Andres. Um Sorry about that, guys. I want to get into Demetrius Andre. Uh, he's got a fight coming up in Washington, D.C. At, at the Capital One Arena uh, against Demond Nicholson. Um, it's not a real interesting fight, uh, but I, I just want to get into him real quick. Before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, please follow our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. On YouTube, all proceeds go to uh, Autism Research and Recovery. Please follow us there uh, and subscribe to us uh, on YouTube at Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. Um, all right, let's get into this Andre thing. Um, so the good news is Demetrius Andre is uh, 31 and 0, 19 knockouts. Uh, the bad news is next month he turns 35. Isn't that crazy? Um, he's moving up to 68. Like I said, he's fighting DeMond Nicholson. Who's DeMond Nicholson? You've seen DeMond Nicholson fight before. He's got a record of 26 4 and 1. Um, he, he's lost to Berlanga. Um, he, he went the distance with Berlanga. Um, I, I think he was the one that extended him. You've seen him in with Jesse Hart, um, Emmanuel Aleem. He, he's been in. He's, um, I'm trying to think, has he actually beaten anyone? Fer Fernando Castaneda. I, I think that was a Friday Night Fights card, uh, if I'm not wrong. Um, uh, he's got a win of a Mike Guy as well. It's what he is, you know. Um, you guys have definitely seen him before. He, he's from that D.C. area too, I think. Um, but that's who he's fighting. That's who Andre is, is fighting. Uh, Andre's got a ton of skills. He's a master boxer. He's got good pop. He's a really good fighter. He should have been a pound for pound guy. Like he's got Hall of Fame talent and ability. Uh, but you go through his resume. And I, I, I'm going to go through this with you. Um, okay, he beat Freddie Hernandez in 2013. That's nine years ago. Almost to the day, January 25th, he beat uh, Freddie Hernandez on a star boxing card. Um, in, the, in the Paramount Theater in Long Island. Then he beat Vanus Rosen and got a WBO, uh, a WBO belt in, in a fight where he won, but he gave away so many rounds towards the end. It's like, did he? Are we, are we sure he won enough rounds here? And he did. He got knocked down in the first round. Um, he, he got up, dominated the fight for, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then he started to just, you know, give rounds away at the end. Then he beat Brian Rose. Who cares? He beat Dario Fabian Puchetta. I don't even know who that is. He beat Willie Nelson. I don't really think that's one of his better wins. This is all 54. Jack Quilke. Eh. Alantes Fox. Eh. Walter Cotton Dakwa. Exactly. Arta Akavav. Hmm. Selesky. Keeler. Liam Williams. Liam Williams. Jason Quigley. That's it. So we go all the way back to 2013. That's his that's his resume. He barely fights once a year. Right? He fights once a year. And I mean, these are the names. There's not a name of note on that. I I really think besides Motorosian, Willie Nelson at that particular time, he was a good fighter. Um that may be the best name. On his resume, um, guys, remember Willie Nelson? Um, he, he lost a decision, a real tight decision, to Vash Um he, he he put some wins together on HBO cards. 
Uh, he beat Tony Harrison. I think he stopped Tony Harrison. Uh, you saw him on Soapbox a few times. That may be the next best guy he's fought. Jason Quigley, I like Quigley. But, I mean, these are, he's 35 years old. So, I mean, the better part of his career is long gone. He's on the back nine of his career, and that's his resume. So whose fault is that, right? Like, he, he obviously wanted Canelo. He wanted Cholo. He wanted Jacobs. He wanted all these guys at 160. He got none of them. He never got Laura at 54 or 60. I don't really know, guys. I, I'm going through it. So he starts off with Joe DeGuardia Star Boxing, which is a weird, you know, he's a – DeGuardia promotes Joe Smith, promotes Cletus Selden. He promotes a couple of decent fighters. It's a weird promoter to sign with. Especially, you know, he's from Rhode Island, not far from Rhode Island, but he's not from Rhode Island. So it was like a weird company to sign with. Um, he's there for a while, doesn't get big fights. He goes to Eddie Hearn. Seems like the perfect fit. Um, you know, they had Canelo at a time, they had Triple G. I mean, they, they had fights there for him. Danny Jacobs. Nothing ever gets made. Now he's with PBC. Maybe PBC will have more luck. Um, we're going to find out now, right? Um, let, let, let's, you know, they got, are you guys interested in that? I mean, at this point, you guys think Caleb Plant or David Benavides destroys him, right? Like there's no chance he has with those guys. Um, can we get him a belt? Like, like what do we got to get a Charlo fight with Andre at 68? Can we get that? I, I, <laughs> Is it that he's just not an interesting, you know, like he's so skilled. You know, a lot of times he hurts his opponents early first round or two and then just lets off the gas and puts on a snooze fest. You know, wins round, 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 round. But he doesn't impress. He doesn't make you want to fight him. Um, is it that or, or or was he holding out, not fighting anyone, looking to get that Canelo payday for so long? Was that a possibility? Was he, you know, just fighting mandatory is to keep the Owen place and, and not lose his chance at the Canelo sweepstakes. Is that a possibility? I think it is, right? Like, Because the names on his resume are so ridiculous. Like, we just went over it. I I, I really think besides Martin which he won in a vacant title shot, I, I think Willie Nelson and Jason Quigley are the two best names on his resume. Brian Rose, Jack Colquet, I mean – Akendawa, right? I mean, Walter Akendawa, Ator Akavav. And this is a guy that is so skilled and he's so good. He could have had a good title run. He could have he could have a Hall of Fame resume. Maybe. We never really got to see it. And now he's 35. Now it's like, now he's way past his prime, but there was no prime. He never fought anybody. And, and I, I want to know what y'all think. Do you think it was because he's just boring? And it's just you're not making an intriguing fight with him, so it's just not worth it, right? Like you put him in with Charlo, maybe he wins, maybe he loses, but it's, we know it's not an interesting fight. You put him in with Laura, you fall asleep. You put him in with you know whoever at the time, right? You you all about Jared Hurd at 54 at that particular time. Um, he moved up to 60. Triple G doesn't want to fight him because of his style. I I, I don't know. Does he? Or did, did he duck these guys, right? Did he duck these guys, or, or did they duck him, right? So, I mean, there's three options here. He ducked them, they ducked him, or, like, the, the fights just aren't profitable and they're not worth it. There's no money in it because he's not an interesting fighter and he doesn't, when he hurts a fighter, he doesn't step on the gas and he, he's content with things going the distance when he should get stoppages early in the fight. Letting things go around and around and around and around. His knockout percentage isn't terrible. He's got 19 knockouts and, and 31 wins, so it's about a 60% knockout ratio. It's not terrible, but it, you know, some of them he got late, you know. Um, some of them he just lets go on and on and on. He comes out like gangbusters and then just like falls asleep at the wheel. And I, I think he's a really good fighter. You know, I, I think he could have had a really good run, but we just never got to see it. And and to me, his career not not because he had a bad career or anything, just because it could have been so much more. We never got a chance to see it. I think he's had one of the most disappointing careers in the history of boxing because he's got that kind of talent, that kind of ability, but he never even fought anyone. 
Besides Von and Smart Erosion, who would never want a world title, give me the best name on that resume. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow us on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Please also subscribe to Texas Boxing Scene. Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day. Uh, please subscribe on your way out. It is January 5th, 2023. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.